Hi, so we're in Autodesk Inventor and we're gonna go through the basics of Autodesk Inventor in kind of one shot here. So, so in Autodesk Inventor, we have a part, assembly, drawings, and presentations. Parts, if, if parts and assemblies, if you can imagine a keyboard, on a keyboard, each key is a part, an assembly would be the entire keyboard put together. Okay, a drawing is a, like an orthographic multi-view drawing. Those, those are generated from parts and assemblies. And then finally, a presentation is a video um, like an exploding part video that we can show uh, the the um, the things we're creating kind of in action. <clears throat> okay, let's go ahead and create a part. The easiest way to do that is to do a drop down menu and notice that all of our different types of files are right here. So let's create the part. Okay, parts are are made from three D features. Okay, and to make a three D feature, we need a two D sketch, and then we're going to apply a three D feature to it. Okay, so let's click Start Two D Sketch. All right. Now we're in 3D mode right now. When we're making a part, one of the most confusing things is discerning whether you are in 3D mode or 2D mode. Okay. So, so right now we're in 3D mode. We see extrude, revolve, all the 3D features. Once I click the start sketch, I select an origin plane and click. Now we're in sketch mode. Okay. Notice that we have sketch one here. That's everything else is grayed out. Only sketch one is highlighted. We see the finish sketch button. We see that the sketch tab is highlighted and it's, you know, and that's, it's, we've switched to the sketch tab and we also see these grid lines. Okay. All right. So we're going to go ahead and make a, a rectangle here. Okay. So click, move the mouse, left click again, and then we're going to dimension. So we always dimension immediately after we click the dimension tool, click, move the mouse up, click again. We're going to make this six inches. Okay, if you lose, notice that we just lost the, uh, the rectangle, uh, went off the screen. In order to get everything we're drawing back on the screen, we use the zoom all button. So go over to the right hand corner, right hand side here and click zoom all. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and dimension the other side. So we click, move the mouse, click again. This time we're gonna create a dimension that is gonna be a parametric dimension. So this means that we, you, we um, are gonna base the dimension on a formula. Okay, so rather than put in a number here, we're gonna click another dimension. Okay, so that was D0, that's the variable name. And then we're gonna divide that by two and hit, um, we can hit the green check or click enter. Okay, notice that that function now resulted in three inches. So we had six divided by two was three. And that's the, that is the dimension for the uh, height of the rectangle. Okay, in order to have a hole in our rectangular solid, we're going to go ahead and add a circle. So we're gonna go ahead and click the circle, move up and click again. Um, this circle is gonna be um, two inches uh, in diameter. Okay, and in order to get the circle into the center of the, uh, of the rectangle, we're going to click um, on the circle. Whoops, we're gonna click the dimension tool. Sorry about that. And we're gonna click up from the circle to the top of the rectangle, move it over. And then we're actually gonna do the same thing. So we're gonna click on the, the, the height of the rectangle, which is D1. We're gonna divide by two and hit enter, okay? We're gonna do the same thing from the side. So click on the circle, um, move over to the side, move down, click again. <clears throat> and we're gonna make this um, the width divided by two. Okay, we're gonna click the green check and finish sketch. Okay, um, so, so we're going to go ahead and extrude. So if we click extrude here, notice we have more than one 2D area. We can select any 2D area. So here's one, here's one, or we can do both. So the first thing we're doing, notice on the extrude dialog, we have two arrows here. So that means we have to select two things. Um, and interestingly enough on this dialog, we select one and actually selects both for us. Um, and then we can go ahead and do the distance for the extrude, in this case 0.5. And we're gonna go ahead and click okay. All right, um, the next thing we're gonna do is create a second sketch. So let's go ahead and do start 2D sketch. Click Start 2D Sketch, and after we do our first sketch, all subsequent sketches are put onto the surfaces of the object. So we're going to click the side of the of the um, existing object. Now, in this object, what we're going to do is we're going to create a uh, a um, a rectangle uh, in the object. So we're going to click on here and click over. Right click OK. Um, now you should be dimensioning all this for the purposes of time. I'm not going to. I'm going to stop dimensioning right now. So so we're going to go ahead and finish sketch. 
and we're going to go ahead and click extrude. Notice extrude, we can either cut or uh, we can either take add material or we can cut. So if I click cut and then um, on the distance, if we just go uh, to next, notice that that gets us to the next face, which is this, uh, this um, the edge of the circle there. I can also select two and then I can go select a face and click OK. All right, and that gets us this, uh, this hole through the middle of our object. Okay, um, so that is the basics of, of 3D modeling. Okay, each of, these, each of these tools works in the same way where you're creating a new sketch, you finish the sketch, and then you apply a 3D uh, um, feature to that sketch. Okay, and you can explore that on your own. Okay, so we've created our part. We haven't saved it yet, so let's go ahead and save it. So, um, so we're going to go ahead and create a, a project folder. Uh, when you're starting out, um, you're, you want to keep everything inside of one folder. Okay, so we're going to call this um, we're going to call this uh, peg toy top and save. Okay, so we want to, uh, so we've created a part and now we want to create an assembly. So we needed to create a couple of more parts to, to demonstrate our assembly. So let's go ahead and we're gonna do the drop down, do part, and we're gonna go ahead and do a start a 2D sketch. Click, we're gonna start 2D sketch, click on the plane. We're gonna create a circle. In general, you should start from the origin. So we're gonna click on the origin, we're gonna move out. We're gonna dimension this to be uh, two inches. Okay, we're going to finish sketch. Then we're going to extrude. So click extrude. It's going to automatically select the, um, this, the closed area of the 2D sketch. We're going to change this to be six inches and click OK. Okay, we're going to go ahead and save this off by clicking the save icon and we're going to call this peg toy peg. We're going to go ahead and click save. Okay, the final, uh, final IPT here, we're gonna go ahead and do the drop down and click part. Okay, we're gonna click on start 2D sketch, move over, left click on the, um, on the XY plane, or sorry, XZ plane, and we're gonna go ahead and uh, create a, um, a rectangle. Okay, the dimension for this, we're gonna go ahead and make this three inches across. And we're gonna, uh, we lost it, we're gonna click zoom all on the right. Staying in the dimensioning tool, we're gonna click, move the mouse over, click again, and we're gonna make this six inches. And then we're gonna go ahead and finish sketch up at the top. Okay, so the next thing we're gonna do is click on extrude. We're gonna extrude it a half an inch. Okay, it's gonna be a simple extrusion. And then we're gonna go ahead and click okay. We're gonna save this off as peg toy side. Okay, for our purposes now, I'm gonna go ahead and close these IPTs. Okay, and we're gonna go ahead and create our next file type, and that's an assembly. So we're gonna do the drop down menu, click assembly. Okay, and an assembly, remember that an assembly doesn't store any information about the parts themselves. All an assembly does is finds the part file, opens it, and positions it relative to other part files, okay? So they all have to be stored in a folder or at least the assembly has to find where the part is located. Okay, for our purposes, um, we're gonna go ahead and save it off first. Um, notice that if we go to all file types, we can get the name, okay? And we're just gonna call this peg toy and then we change it back to IAM, so peg toy IAM and save. We're going to go ahead and do the drop down to place from content center. Instead, we're going to uh, select place. We're going to select the first. Um, the first one we're going to select here is um, it's in the wrong folder. The first thing we're going to select is the is the object that most things are going to attach to. In this case, the peg toy top. So we're going to click peg toy top and click open. When we're placing an assembly, notice that I can rotate the uh, cube by clicking and dragging. And I can click. I can also zoom wheel out to scroll. And I can continue to click um, as I need more parts. When I'm finished, I right click and click OK. I can also right click on parts and delete. 
right click and delete. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and get all of my parts in here just initially because there's so few parts. So I'm gonna go ahead and click place. I'm gonna get the peg toy side, click, click to place, click to place again, right click okay. Click on place one more time and I'm gonna get the peg toy peg, click open and click to place, right click okay. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and um, um, once we have everything in here, it's a bit helpful if we go ahead and select everything right click on one of these uh, and then click eye properties okay we're going to go over to occurrence and we're going to click on degrees of freedom and then click ok what this is going to do is it's going to tell us if each if each um if each object is fully constrained or not okay so uh so let's go ahead and um and start to constrain these uh, these object these items together okay so let's go ahead and click constrain now, what is a constraint? You can think of constraints as gluing things together. So the two that we're gonna use for this basic assembly are mate, mate, and mate flush. So let's take our hands out in front of us and let's put our palms together. You have just mate mated the palms together. So the palms are facing each other and now they share a same plane, okay? For mate flush, let's take our palms, hold our hands out in front of us with our palms facing the ceiling, hold one above another, okay? If we were to mate flush them, Move your palms so they're even with each other, but both are still facing the ceiling. Okay, so now those are mate flushed. Okay, all right, so let's go ahead and get started. So we have a mate mate, and we're going to start with, uh, with one of the sides. So the first thing we're going to do is we're gonna scroll in and click, see how we don't click, we never click an edge. We always click on a surface for this. So we're gonna click on the top surface of the side. We're gonna use the click cube by clicking and dragging. We're going to wheel out, and we even might click the wheel and pan in, okay? And we're trying to get to see the bottom of the top there, okay? So we have the side, top of the side, bottom of the top there, okay? And we're going to go ahead and click Apply. Okay, so now that that is that part, if we click on the right side to get it straight on, you can see that that part is now stuck together. Okay, now one of the things that is difficult here is that both parts are moving around. And what we can do is we can take that main first part and we can what's called ground it. Okay, so we can right click on the first part <clears throat> or on the kind of the central part of the assembly, right click and we can click ground it and that kind of locks it in place. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is that we're gonna flush up the sides of this. So we're gonna click constrain, we're gonna change from mate mate to mate flush. And then we're going to go ahead and click on the side of the of the side and the side of the top. And notice that now those are locked together. Okay. Also notice that do you see this green arrow degrees of freedom? Notice that there is only one left. We click apply. And the last one we're going to do, use the use the cube to kind of move around. We're going to stay on mate flush and we're going to click the final, the side of the uh, side and the side of the top and click apply and notice our degrees of freedom are gone from that object. Okay, um, also notice that when we grounded the first, the first item, okay, the top, notice that all the degrees of freedom left at the top as well. Okay, we're gonna repeat on the other side. So we're gonna go back to mate, mate. We're gonna do the, we're gonna you know, zoom in and get to the top surface of the side and click, click to uh, select. We're gonna select the bottom. So we're gonna mate, mate it together. Remember that's like putting your palms together, right? We're gonna glue it together and click apply. Then we're gonna flush the two sides. So we're gonna click on mate flush. We're gonna click the side of the top and the side of the, uh, sorry, the side of the side and the side of the top and click apply. We're gonna use the cube, click and drag the cube around so we can see both things, click the wheel drag the wheel across to move. We can even move things out of our way uh, if necessary, but we shouldn't, it shouldn't be super necessary here. Um, and notice we just have one left. We can see that degrees of freedom there. So we're just gonna go ahead and flush the, the front of the uh, um, side there and the front of the top. And we go ahead and click apply. Okay, our final constraint is with the, uh, with the uh, cylinder. So this round peg, all we're going to do is mate, mate the center line. So we see this dotted line on circular objects and circular holes. So we find the center line and click mate. Find the center line, it's kind of hard to find sometimes. You might have to move the cube around a bit. 
Okay, we're looking for that dotted line for the whole of there it is right there. Okay, we see in the center there it's not the it's not the dot in the center. It's not that. It's that dotted line right there. We're going to go ahead and click it and click OK. All right, so now that we're out, we can kind of drag things around. All right, we can go ahead and move things up and down, right, just like that. Uh, we can also click on an object and we can apply different um, uh, materials to them. So if we go ahead and we go, um, let's say we're going to make the sides uh, gold, let's say gold and gold metal. Let's say we're going to make the peg. Let's go up to default and let's say we're going to make the peg driftwood. Um, let's say that we're going to make the top. We're going to make the top, uh, say, indoor pool. That's a bit hard to see, isn't it? <laughs> so let's make the top. Uh, let's make it nylon six. Okay. Okay. So there we go. So there is our uh, there is our peg toy kind of constrained together. So that is how we do a basic assembly. The other the other types of constraints that we have um, are uh, are also just as easy. It's just that you know initially we're just using those mate mate constraints. So okay. Um, that is an assembly. <clears throat> okay. Let's go ahead and move on. So we're going to go ahead and close our assembly for now. And we're going to go ahead and create a drawing. Okay, so we're going to do our drop down menu again and click on drawing. Okay, so here's the drawing. Um, just notice right when we come in that the drawing itself uh, has it's a D size paper, so it's quite big. Uh, if you're planning on printing this out on a home printer, you know, an eight and a half by 11 printer, um, what I suggest doing when you're first starting out is just to delete the title block. Uh, you can always come back in and do this when you get more when you get more experience, uh, and then right click on the sheet, click on Edit Sheet, change the size to A4. Okay, and that's going to be the size of your home printer. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and bring in a um, a, a part file. Okay, so we're going to go Base View, and um, actually it's best to save this first. So let's go ahead and save it, and we're going to um, we're going to save it as pegtoy.dwg and click save. Okay, we're going to do a base view. We're going to select the base view and that's going to be our uh, our top, peg toy top. We're going to click open. Now notice that the view is not really correct here, right? So the scale is automatically selected by inventor. The view is not correct though, so we need to go ahead and use the cube. And we want a, we want a front view that is going to give us the most detail, okay? Uh, in this case, in this case, we're gonna we're gonna have this here. This is gonna be our front view, okay? Uh, and then we go ahead and notice we can get all the projected views at well. So is and notice the scale is just fine and the scale automatically adjusted. We wouldn't want one to one; it's way too big. We want one half. We also take a look at our hidden lines. Hidden lines are moved or shaded uh, versions, okay? Um, and we want hidden lines. Uh, selected. So the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and, and move up and click to place our projected views. So our top projected view, our side, and then our isometric view. Um, once those are all placed, we're going to go ahead and click OK. Okay, um, so uh, so clearly I grabbed a different top uh, than the one that we were working on just a second ago, uh, but it's better for uh, for uh, demonstration purposes here. Okay, uh, so let's take a look, and we're going to go onto the annotate tab uh, and start to annotate this sketch. So let's go ahead and create the center line for our circle. Okay, so we click on the center line tool, click on the hole for the center line. We're going to go ahead and click the dimension, and we're going to click on the circle and bring out our uh, dimension. Okay. Notice that in yours, when you first start, this will open up each time you do it. The edit dimension when created is automatically set. I'm going to go ahead and put through. Okay, because this is a hole that goes all the way through. Um, and notice that I'm going to uncheck this edit dimension when created, but you'll have to do that when you first start. Okay. Um, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to start to create our dimensions. So, so I'm going to start on the top. So I'm going to click one side and then the, the line that I'm dimensioning to. Okay, and then I'm going to start in. I'm careful not to do any chain dimensioning. Okay, so we're going from you know baseline dimensioning here. So we're going to go from one side to the other. 
Okay, we're careful to place things neatly, not overlapping lines, not dimensioning to hidden lines. Okay, so there's our side. Uh, now we're gonna do the top, the, the um, height. Oops, and I definitely didn't leave myself enough room. We're gonna right click and click OK to get out of the dimensioning tool. We're gonna move the dimension over, get back into the dimensioning tool. Um, then we're gonna go ahead and click um, to the bottom of the square, bottom of the rectangle to the top of the square. And I missed one, right? Bottom of the rectangle to the center of the circle. And things are a little bit crowded once again. Okay, notice that uh, notice that when I went to the center of the circle, um, uh, it went it went over the square. So we're going to go ahead and move it to the other side. And then we have one final dimension here, and that's going to be the width of the um, of, or the depth of the block there. Okay, so that that is a simple uh, drawing. Let's take a look also, and we can see that we can also create a new sheet. Okay, so if we have an existing sheet, we can create a second sheet. So we're going to go ahead and click, right click OK to get out of the dimension tool, right click new sheet. And notice that sheet one is still here if we double click on it, but it becomes grayed out. So we're going to go to sheet two. All right, so this time we're going to go ahead and uh, place views and we're going to click on base view. We're going to find our model and it's just a, you know, a slightly different one than the one we just did. Hey, you know what, let's go get ours that we've made. All right, so let's. So we have this here. Uh, we bring in our assembly this time, um, and we're just going to take a look at creating a list of parts. Okay, so we have our assembly. We're going to go ahead and make it um, um, not one to one. Wow, that's big. We're going to make it two to one. Okay, move it up, and this time we're going to make it um, a shaded view. Click OK. Up, oh, and let's go ahead and try that again. Uh, Click OK. There we go. Sorry, raster view, not shaded view. <laughs> and then uh, we're going to go over to annotate and we're going to go ahead and do a parts list. <clears throat> we're going to select the view for the parts list. This could be any assembly. Obviously, yours would be more complicated. Click on the, um, click on the view that we want to create. Do we want to select there and then click OK? We're going to bring it down to the side here and then we can go ahead and create these balloons. So we place the parts list, we can go to a balloon and then we can go over and start to label. We double click to place the balloon. Okay, double click, click, double click. Oops, click, double click. Okay, and that's how we create our drawing. Okay, let's go ahead and, and close our drawing here and we're gonna create our presentation. So we're gonna go ahead and click the X. All right, so, uh, so let's go ahead and go to the new and we're gonna create a presentation. Okay, a presentation is based upon an assembly. Okay, and clearly ours is gonna be really simple, but yours would be more complicated again. So we're gonna click our uh, peg toy. Whoops, let's go get our, our one that we created. Okay, so we're gonna go to our uh, Oops, we're gonna to go to our uh, presentation and it's gonna ask us to select an assembly. And we're gonna click on our peg toy, there we have it. And so the presentation functions mainly um, on this tweak component. So we're gonna go ahead and tweak components. Um, notice that I'm gonna go kind of zoom kind of way out so that I'm, I can easily manipulate these things. The duration is how long each is going to last. Yours is gonna to default to 2.5 seconds. Notice that what I can do is I can select a part and then I can select a, um, a axis to move it on. I can also select to rotate it. So I can say, hey, I wanna rotate this, you know, by say 100 and, well, let's say 360, right? Okay. Um, I can also do it numerically, so I can go to Tweak Components, I can click on an object, I can just click on it, I can pull on the axis that I want to move it. Um, this time I'm going to just move it 9 inches. Then I can click on Rotate, I can rotate it, uh, let's say 360 degrees, right? And hit enter okay I can also do more than one in a row so let's say that I wanted to uh, move two components let's say I can click on one move up now notice as I'm doing this take a look at the uh, the um, 
the timeline down here notice the timeline is changing as i'm doing this so once i click over to my next component it just automatically creates it okay with the and the duration that is set so when i click over to the next component notice that um well this is my last component so i'm going to move it down and then when i click the green check you can see on the timeline that it creates it for peg toy top okay all right so let's take a look here we can kind of move back um, once these um, once these tweak components are created, so notice that you know it's a, each one spins like that um, and then moves into place. We can go down to the timeline and let's say we decided that these need to take a little bit longer than, than we thought and let's say we want to you know kind of overlap some things. Notice that we can drag these. Um, where we create a rotation and a motion in one, notice we can't adjust it. We have to double click it. And then and then adjust it that way. So we then can move it. We can lengthen it, but they kind of lengthen um, proportionally. So let's go ahead and do that. So they kind of all overlap here. All right, we can test it out. Now we're going to reverse this so everything comes back together in our video. So we can reverse it, press play, and we can see it all kind of come back together here. Okay, so we're, I'm satisfied with our with our um, with our animation here. So it's time to export it. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and move everything down. And the uh, the way that the camera is located for our video. So we're going to export a video, uh, and we want to make sure that our camera is correct. So for example, if we if we um, our view right here, like if we just had this, what we would see is exactly what you're seeing here okay which wouldn't be too great right okay so let's say that we went exactly uh, 45 degrees okay that might be a little bit better all right so you're going to see that the view that we have when we export the video the same thing we're looking at is exactly the perspective that's going to be produced in the video so let's give that a shot all right so we're going to go ahead and click video and we're going to do current storyboard uh, we're going to select instead of current window size, we're going to make it 920 by 1080. That's 1080p. If we did the 720, that'd be 720p. Uh, we're going to do a file name. We're going to call it Pig Toy, okay? And then we're going to save it to uh, Projects 2, right? So here we have it, Projects, and we want to save it to our folder and select Folder. Uh, and then we're going to keep it on WMV. WMV is a Windows movie file format. Um, the other option is AVI, which is a little bit more universal, um, but I don't believe the compression is quite as good um, out of this program. So we're going to leave it on WMV for now. Okay, we go ahead and click Create. Oops, last thing. So we said we didn't want an explosion video, right? We want things to come back together. So we're going to go ahead and click Reverse so they all come back together for us. So let's go ahead and click OK. And we're going to wait for it to publish, which is just going to take a second. Okay, so it's published, and let's go take a look. Okay, so here is our video, and let's play it. Okay, and this is what was produced. So we see our uh, our thing, our um, assembly coming back together, and it's quite a nice video. I'm sure yours will be better. Okay, so that is um, so that is kind of a basic introduction to uh, Autodesk Inventor. Uh, I hope it helps. Uh, best of luck.